Deep in the desert of Utah are three arches just outside of Arches National Park. One month into my three month road trip across America, I stopped by here in the three days that was in Moab. These arches are arguably better than anything you'll see in Arches National Park, Bowtie, Pinto and Corona Arch. Today's adventure starts bright and early from Moab, Utah. Heading just outside the city, this long windy road follows this river and gives you spectacular views. After a few twists of the snaking river, you reach the trailhead to Pinto, Bowtie and Corona Arch. Okay, so we've got our first arch here. This is called Tiny Arch. <laughs> Kidding. We've actually got another YouTuber up here today. So I've got Wandering Gypsy here. How do you spell that? It's J-E-E-P-S-Y. I have a Jeep. <laughs> Ironically enough, I was doing research for this area and I saw one of her videos. It's me. So check out our channel. Small chain section here. She came back. Oopsies. I'm coming down one hand and the dog.
So this one is bowtie arch. The reason why is there's a couple of indents on the sides to make it look like a bow tie. Bit of a stretch, but cool arch. So this big arch here is called the Corona Arch and back in the 80s or 90s one of the park rangers told me someone flew a jet through there. They actually flew a plane through there. That's some uh, gutsy kind of thing to do. Alright this is fine. I'm going to go over and do uh, that other arch. It starts with a P. From here it was time to backtrack about halfway to a fork in the road which goes up the other side of this rock outcrop up to Pinto Arch. So the one we're going up to is called the Pinto Arch. It's uh, somewhere up there. I can't quite see it yet, where those people are. in there but there isn't just a hole
know what it is about arches. I mean, maybe it's just because it's a natural formation that's so rare, but there's just kind of something a little bit magical about it. And uh, it's very peaceful here. The same token, I know this thing could fall at any moment. <laughs> the odds of that are pretty low, but uh, yeah. Super hot out here, it's like 38 degrees, and uh, I just chugged all my water, so it's time to go back down. I'm gonna book it down there super fast. The train went through here not too long ago. So that was about seven, just over seven kilometers. What is that? Four and a half, maybe five miles, not quite five miles, something like that. Uh, 1,700 feet of elevation gain, and uh, fantastic views, just hotter than grandpa's spicy mustard up there. Oh, it's hot. I'm gonna go jump in the river now. River, river. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to support me further, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash davidhiking. Till next one, have a great day. Hey, hey, welcome to the trail tips for a Corona, Bowtie, and Pinto arch. Now, these arches, you can see here, they are not that far outside of Moab. It's only, I don't know what this is, maybe 10 or 15 minute drive. Uh, you got Moab here, and it's basically you drive up to here, across this bridge, and then I think it's right here. You turn, come back down. It's a beautiful drive down here, absolutely gorgeous, and around, and then to the trailhead. The trailhead itself has a bathroom right there. So there's the bathroom, and I should note at the end of the video I say go for a swim. I didn't go for a swim because the river, if we look down here, I went over here and down to this boat launch. There's a sign there at the river said that you can die from that swimming in that river because the current is really strong, so I just splashed some water on myself. There's a couple paddle boarders, but no one was swimming there, so don't swim in that river. But yeah, this uh, trail takes you up a couple switchbacks across an active railroad track. So yeah, the trail goes around here. Um, this is actually where I met uh, Wandering Gypsy. Yeah, once you get to here, there's just where the fork in the road is. So I think there's a trail that was uh, up here, but really it's just little marks on the, uh, like a little teal dotted lines that you follow. So there's no real trail. You can just go anywhere, really. Um, I ended up going up this way and up to Bowtie Arch and then Crone Arch and then back. And I follow this path and then down. I'd recommend doing the other way. Go to Pinto Arch first and then go through these two. Because Corona Arch is the best one. The Bowtie Arch is the most lackluster of them. And really, it's probably the most lackluster of all the arches. Um, if we just zoom out real quick here. I went and did like all of them. I went and did Turd Arch, Double Arch. Um, there's a few I didn't do. There's like Sand Arch and whatever. There's a couple ones I didn't do. So we get up here past uh, Fiery Furnace. I will go back and visit to do this because this is a real, uh, you need a guide to go through here because people die in here and you get lost. And with that, I went and did this by myself, which is called uh, Devil's Garden. You start down here and you hike up here and there's all these different arches. And I did all of these. So wall arch, da 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 and went all the way back here. It's serious like backcountry stuff. And I got lost back there and it was dark and it was scary. <laughs> so stay tuned for that, that video is coming, but I just wanna point that out that I went and saw all of these arches. Um, double O arch is fantastic. This one's, there's two arches stacked. But uh, out of all those, the Bowtie arch um, is one of the most lackluster. Do the Corona arch last, cause that's actually one of the best arches out of all the parks and is drone friendly, which is fantastic. Um, the Pinto arch is, you know, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. So if you go this way first, you get Pinto arch, what you do get, is aside from your first arch, which will be a little more exciting, if, especially if you're just fresh into the park, you get these beautiful views, as you saw in the video, and like this is just fantastic. I, I just loved it up here on this shelf. So you kind of get that, you know, the, the, all those views first, and then this arch, and then when you come back, instead of going back to the trail in this way, I saw there's some people cut straight across like that all the way over, and then when you get over here, this is where that chain section is. If you're a new hiker, this would be probably something maybe that you'd find a little bit spicy. It'd be, it'd be great for a new hiker to do, because um, you can kind of cut your teeth on something like that. If you're an intermediate or advanced hiker, it's just you'll walk up there without even using the chains. And I only use the chain uh, for the video. I didn't need the chain going up there. There's little steps that are cut into the rocks. You can just walk up there like it's stairs but it is pretty slick and pretty uh, steep, so you might as well use a chain just in case. Uh, as you saw, the guy slipped on the video there, so um, once you get around here, you know, you have to be a little bit careful. You don't want to fall off this stuff, but uh, you can kind of go anywhere here. There's something to note, too, here. When you get here, either you got to take the low route and then go back to get up to Bowtie Arch, which is what I end up doing, or you go the high route. Um, not up here. This is my GPX track is confused, but 
basically you end up going up over here and then go across and up into there because this stuff is all way too steep. You can't, it's too slick. You can't get up there. So, um, and then for the actual arch itself, the main one, the Corona arch, um, I end up stopping just under the arch and I wish I had gone further. The, the trail actually goes to there. And from there you get this amazing view of this. I, I can't believe I didn't go do that. You can also go up this. I wouldn't recommend that though. I saw that in a Devon Supertramp video that's like 10 years old where they have the big rope swing. Um, and this is where they, they, they attached a fixed line and then they, they clipped in, I think, and then walked up there or whatever. And then they swung through the Corona arch. But so you technically can walk up this. It would have been cool to get some shots from on top there too, but I didn't, I didn't know that when I did this, I had no idea. And I didn't walk out there to see that. But if you do go up here, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you do, uh, be very careful not to rock. There was a bunch of rocks up there I saw in my drone footage and don't knock any of those rocks down because you can easily kill someone if you do even just a small rock this size, um, hit someone in the head. So definitely be very careful. I would in general to say stay away from that stuff. But uh, that's basically it for, uh, you know, the Pinto Bowtie and Corona uh, Arch. It's uh, super hot out there. I would recommend starting at I started at 8 a.m. and I got finished by about noon. That was terrible because it was 40 degrees Celsius when I was done, so or 105. So I would recommend starting two or three hours earlier, like 5 to 6 a.m. Um, either that or do it late. Like, oh, I know it's, it was still pretty hot late in the day, but you go out there maybe 6 p.m. and then you can finish at 9. And in the summertime, when the sun is still kicking around, you can, you know, navigate out of there. This would be uh, pretty easy to navigate in the dark if you had to, so... But uh, just, you know, I'd say 6, 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Um, I wouldn't go in the middle there. It's just brutal. It was like the hottest, uh, <laughs> this is the absolute hottest conditions I had in my entire road trip. And my camera gear, I was having to like protect it from overheating. That's the first time I've ever had to do that. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode and you got a little bit of value here from these trail tips and the video itself. Be sure to subscribe if you want to support me. You can share these videos on your Facebook. I greatly appreciate it. Or if you want to support me further, I have obviously a Patreon at patreon.com slash David Hiking. Until the next one, have a great day.